Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy 2023. Today for a sermonic theme, I would like to use looking forward, looking forward. Every Christmas, I write a Christmas letter to family and friends. When I was young, I got Christmas letters from others, and I thought, what a neat idea. A Christmas letter entails a family sharing some of the highlights of their year. It was really fun at first. I got into Christmas stationery and the design of the cards and wording. Over the years, it seemed like the wording became less meaningful that was being written in Christmas cards. It was like the cards weren't really saying anything. So I began to venture to make my own cards. But that got to be way, way labor intensive. But 20 plus years of writing Christmas letters. This year I considered passing. The last few years it has lost its fun appeal. And as I venture into more and more of adulting, I have often scrambled to remember, what did I do in this previous year? Some years have felt like a whirlwind. Other years have felt heavy. And yet other years have felt great. Most years are a mixed bag. While I wasn't looking forward to writing a letter this year, when I did, I remembered. I saw God's presence. I saw God's goodness. I saw the journey I had been on and just how many miles God and I had covered together. But I might have missed that if I hadn't done my usual Christmas letter. This spiritual discipline of looking back has been a good one. I recommend it. Taking time to reflect on each year. Pause is good in one's life. And reflecting on our past can also be good. See God in the midst of the storm. See how God maneuvered you out of a situation. See how God was right there all along. See how God worked things out. It is because of the gift of looking back that the text today is often a hard pill to swallow. Here is Lot and his family fleeing Sodom and Gomorrah, an urban nightmare. Their urban context is loaded with corruption and evil. The Bible never tells us actually what specifically was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, even though the religious light will swear the sin of this community was same gender relationships. Whatever it was that they were doing in this city, it had gotten so bad. The angels were sent in to get Lot and his family out. The situation was dire. There is no time to pack up the house. There is no time for goodbyes. There is absolutely no time for lingering. The very next morning, they are instructed to go out, to go, go, go. And whatever they do, do not look back. But remember... They had lived there. They had memories. They had grown here. They had friends here. They had a home and livestock. And Lot tried to negotiate staying, maybe implying all of this was a bit too much. But the word of the Lord was, leave, leave now. And on their venture out under the weight of it all, Lot's wife stole a look back, remembering turned her head. And she, the text says, became a pillar of salt. I know, just really ludicrous stuff right there. Fable or fact, whatever you're learning, whatever you're leading, she is no longer with us, according to this story. I have never had to flee. Have you? To pick up and leave almost everything in pursuit of quality life. When I listen to refugees, they are always looking back. The past is such a part of who they are. They remember home. Even as they are moving forward, their culture, their food, their family and home keep calling them, keep calling them. It's impossible not to look back, especially when the spaces and places you are leaving are in such bad condition or are being destroyed. And it's for that reason I think we could have cut Lot's wife some slack after all. She was not at the table when they were having this discussion. She was simply given the plan without any input and then asked to execute fairly quickly. 
So now that we have established that looking back is okay, let's throw a monkey wrench into the complicated message. Sometimes we can look back, but sometimes we can look back too much and we can get lost. It prevents us from both living in the moment or looking forward to the future sometimes. So while it's okay and important to look back, it's important to look forward too. The text is calling them to move forward. There is nothing for you here in Sodom and Gomorrah. The city is going to be destroyed. Run for your life. Get out of here. Take only the bare minimum. Go. Look forward. I'm inviting you all to look forward to 2023. We have a whole new year before us. We have a fresh start. We have new mercies and wonders to experience daily from God. I remember there was this one boy in school, and every time he made a mistake on his paper, he would ball it up and start over on a fresh, clean sheet of paper. After watching him do this a few times, I said, wait, 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 wait. Maybe we can erase something. Uh, but maybe, maybe we don't need to ball the paper up every time. He thought with a mistake he needed that new paper. He needed that fresh start. Right now, that's what we have. We have a fresh start. We have a new year. We have a new beginning before us. It's January 1, 2023. We have a blank piece of paper. We have a new chapter. We have a new year. Let us look forward. Amen.